thank you very much for staying with us at Plus TV Africa. And if you're just joining us, well, this is Nigeria Decides. Now, the importance of agricultural supplies for the structural transformation accompanying economic growth often is stressed by development economists. Now, this led to the question, does agriculture financing matter in the growth process? What about the new uh, tech platforms for agriculture, do they truly provide financing for farmers? Well, that is a critical question. And the conversation on agriculture yeah. um, is about to commence. We have our guest with us in the studio, Tele Ola Kola Edung, is the program coordinator, Context Global Development. And we also have David Appenda, Agri Finance Department, Sterling Bank, PLC. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. You. Thank you. Yeah. Now let's hit the ground running. Yeah. How critical is finance for agricultural development? Let me start with you, Tele. There is nothing that can happen in agriculture in Nigeria without financing. Okay. Currently, Nigeria is in the subsidiary stage of production in agriculture. We should have gotten to the point of commercial or uh, the use of mechanization. But right now, we find that there's still a lot of so smallholder farmers. And how do we push smallholder farmers? How do we push the economy from being a subsidiary run farming system to a more commercial where we can start looking at importing or exporting rather? Now, the issue with that is that there is no money to push the value chains forward. Farmers are not open or open or allowed to get funding more so through banking. It's really difficult, I would say, for funding to move through the value chains. But for value chains to be streamlined, there is a lot of fragmentation in our value chains. And for that to be streamlined, there is need for excessive funding to be pumped into these various value chains. Nigeria was once a giant in agriculture. And funding was available. A lot of resources yeah. were coming in at the time where Nigeria was on the top of the game in terms of cocoa, in terms of groundnut. But right now, we've shifted our focus to crude oil. And for us to go back to that place where our value chains are able to sustainably push an economy of export, we need financing to run through the system. Yeah. And now, that's David, absolutely. quickly, now, to mm -hmm. farm or not to farm is no longer a relevant question. I believe you would understand that. And a re sure. recent report revealed that Nigeria has arable land of about 84 million hectares. That's correct. But in able, for us to be able to utilize this, financing comes into question. So what do we really need in terms of having the structure to push this? Okay, thanks for your question. Um, agriculture is very key. Um, it's key to the development of any economy. Agriculture is important. That's, not, um, that's a no-brainer. But for agriculture to thrive, for farmers to do what they need to do, for us to move from subsistence to commercial production of agricultural produce, we need financing. And um, in Nigeria today, agriculture is highly, highly underfunded. I think we have the lowest um, funding levels across the globe. And Nigeria, Sub-Saharan Africa um, generally, but Nigeria in particular. So today we have over 10 million smallholder farmers who struggle to get financing to do what they need to do. The kind of structures that would work would probably we'll be looking at um, the various stakeholders to do this for us. Typically, the government is key to making agriculture very, very attractive, to driving um, funds to this sector. But also the private um, investors, like the commercial banks and the other financial institutions, also have a role to play in all this. But I think if the right foundation is laid via the government, then it might now encourage um, well, private, the government, the private uh, sector. In line so, with the CBN, yeah. also actually dis uh, approved all the disbursement of about 75 billion under the um, Nigerian incentive base um, risk sharing in yeah. agricultural lending. Yeah. Now, you work within the banking sector as That's well right. with a focus on agriculture. Right. How do you see this scheme working in favor of the farmers? Okay, so the Nice House scheme is a welcome development and Honestly, it has really, really helped in help in, in the banks availing funds to farmers. Typically, what NISA does is um, they incentivize or they give the farmers credit guarantee. So if you're talking about the NISA Anchor Boras program, which Sterling Bank unfortunately was the first bank to push for it, until now we, we have the stronger, one of the strongest partnership with NISA in availing thousands of farmers financing. What they do normally is when you are to give farmers funds, NISA comes in and gives guarantee 
to probably the tune of 75% for smallholder farmers. And if you are probably a medium sized farmer, you mm. can get 50% guarantee. If you're a big player, you get lower than that. So, with that comfort, the bank knows that the exposure is not so much. So, if out of probably 1 million naira I'm giving, I'm supposed to give farmers a million, a particular farmer a million naira, and my size guaranteeing 75%, that means over 750,000 naira is already covered for. So my exposure will just be 250,000 naira. So mm -hmm. whatever happens, so that kind of conversation. But again, 75 billion is a mark for that. It's way, way too small. So the bank can only play as much as the funds are available. Now, um, let me take you back to 1960 before we move forward, because we know at the time when we attained independence, agriculture was the mainstay of the economy. And at the time, we had 63% of our GDP coming from agriculture. Now we are at a place where 80% of consumables in Nigeria are imported. Beyond NSL, what else can we do? What does the Bank of Industry essentially do for us to have a better agricultural system? Let me come to you, Tim. OK, before I jump into that question, I would like to bring us a little bit back on the question of NARSO. We have the issue of uh, for NARSO to fund, the system must be streamlined, yeah. meaning we must have someone that is going to offtake. We have the farmers. We have those that are intermediary players, but there is someone that is crucial to of taking a, maybe a big processor, a multinational, a global, mm -hmm. right? Now, if I push a value chain that there is no major processor, NARSO cannot fund that value chain, even though that value chain is critical to feeding Nigeria and potentially mm. a, a, a crop that would institutionalize or push our export. But because it is not streamlined, NISO cannot guarantee that kind of value Can you give chain. us an instance? I'll yeah. give you one that I'm working on currently. Uh, we're working uh, with YAM. Now, it's very difficult because YAM is a, one, it's not a completely uh, commercialized, mechanized crop, mm. right? And so it's expensive if you're going to be working on this crop. Now, we don't have a major, major player mm. the way we have in cassava. Now, in cassava, you can list so many processes, right? We have agro-allied, you have saltry, you have flour mills, you have, I mean, the list goes, goes on, on, on in terms of mm. processes that are desperately looking for cassava. But now, when you're talking about yam, how many people do we talk about? Look at yam mm -hmm. flour, ola ola. Mm -hmm. How much is it to, to do a bag of ola ola, okay. right? If there is, if yam is expensive, how much is a bag of ola ola? Maybe like, let's say if we, for argument purposes, let's say it's 1,500. Yeah. When yam is expensive, how much is one yam? To now talk of making a whole bag of 5 kg. Yeah. Does the processor make the money back? Mm. So simply That's put, you are saying question. that we don't have an integration of end-to-end -end, um, agriculture value chain where we have all of these key And that players. is why it is exactly. important for us to look beyond near cell. Mm. That is why I mentioned, don't we also have the Bank of Agriculture? Can they, what do they essentially do in Nigeria presently? Now, the issue of Bank of Industry, yes, you would Agriculture. Have, well, Bank of Agriculture, you have some cases where people say it works. It worked for them. But honestly, I'm not a political person, but I do mm. believe that Bank of Agriculture has made some substantial progress in terms of smallholder farmers. But I don't believe they have made the level of impact that they can make. Farmers have to bring collateral. Farmers have to bring all kinds of things to justify funding. You do realize these farmers don't have anything. All they have is this farm that they are potentially loaning or leasing. Mm. You know, many of them don't own these farms. So the problem then becomes, what are we doing to ensure all these banks are fantastic, but they're still banks. They still have to make some kind of money back. Mm -hmm. They're not a charity case, mm -hmm. right? So now what is it that we can do to incentivize as government? What can we do to incentivize these institutions, Bank of Agriculture, Bank of Industry, whatever the case might be? to look at these small players or potentially these large players Absolutely. that can come in mm -hmm. as an off-taker or potential exporters. So in your own proposal, what would you say we should do to get things right? Well, for starters, it's important for us to look through each value chain. Mm. 
there are some value chains that are highly fragmented, but they're very important for the economy, right? Now we have to look through what are the potential loopholes? Where are these opportunities that lie within this value chain? Mm. Now take, for instance, in Isain. Mm. There's so many things being produced there. That's in all your state. In all your state. Mm -hmm. Why can't the government put a whole uh, processing plant there? to process maybe cassava, to process yam, where these farmers can come in and say, okay, you know what, buy it from us. Let us make something, buy it from us, be our steady source. But when they have to carry it, and going back to a conversation we were having earlier, these, these crops are perishable. Mm. There is nothing the government has put in place to ensure that these crops can last beyond the life, life cycle um, or, or of their, of their uh, life So span, quickly now, um, Talia and David, do you think we need more public-private sector initiatives like we have the uh, NERSAL, or you expect that we should continue to leverage on this initiative that we've already had kickstart since 2013? Okay, I, I feel there's need for more collaborative work, and all entities need to take more responsibility. I'll tell you what we're doing in Sterling Bank. Um, there's a commodity exchange we are in, uh, we are, we've launched. Um, it's called Sabex, Telling Affects Benkabi Exchange. What that is supposed to do is to help smallholder farmers deposit their um, commodities in the warehouses. Mm -hmm. And then from the, the commodities that are deposited, they can ask for loans. And then, you know, that solution will really, really bring more funds to smallholder farmers and probably stop post-harvest losses. Now, why is this important? The bank is taking a bold step because you know that the government cannot do it alone. Now, if you have commodities, grains typically stored in warehouses, and then want to do it like what the just stock is doing with stocks, so people can now come and trade. So for instance, you might probably not be interested in agriculture. You don't do primary production, but you've seen that there are commodities listed on the mm. exchange. You can just go, let me trade for six months. That would drive private investment into the sector, and that's the work Sterling Bank is doing in this regard. Okay, yeah. um, and now Tele, let's talk about the bills pending before the National Assembly. We know, of course, that um, there's a Wayhouse bill and there's also the Fertilizer Seedlings bill because farmers need to um, produce seed, um, rather produce crops that are very um, strong, uh, crops that would be, uh, yeah. So it's not about just planting and um, not getting anything from it. It's about having quality products that can sell even in the international market. So the bills are still pending and we are faced with an election. Where do we stand now? Nigerian politics makes me laugh, honestly. Because once uh, the incumbent leaves, <laughs> policies kind of die down. Yeah. Uh, what I would say to this is that our government officials, those that we are electing, our leaders, we need to look beyond our own selfish interests. People are dying, people are hungry, there's a large number of unemployment. The fertilizer bill, the warehouse bill, the seed act bill, these are going to help smallholder farmers. Now, is government ready to put aside politics, biases, party, party, party politicking, and say, okay, we need to do something to enhance the life of these people? Farm, agriculture is where Nigeria is going to go in the next couple of years, really. And so if things are not being put aside, selfish ambitions being put aside and say, let's push this bill. It's been in the, go it's been on the, uh, in the parliament or in legislature for too long. That's true. It's yeah. too long. How many years? Buhari said he was going to help us and push it forward. But don't you think some school of thought will also say that, well, for this to be attractive enough to our legislators and also to have presidential assent, we have to focus, or these farmers have to focus on areas of comparative advantages and push for value addition. So this goes beyond just the basic hoe and axe and, tool, and other basic tools. Don't you think the conversation has to be more attractive for government to see a need to push this bill? Yeah, so um, typically there's a difference between seed and then um, the normal inputs farmers use in um, producing. So if you, what, what happens today is if you are not really enlightened as a farmer, probably your, the, your recent harvest you put back into the soil, you know, to, 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 to produce. Ideally, you should get improved variety. I'm speaking about 
the bill for inputs and all that. It has to be pushed aggressively. And over the years, we have been doing primary production for too long. The conversation should now move to, like you mentioned, value addition. We should, there are so many um, stuff you can get from mm. particular crops. For instance, for cocoa, you could get a whole lot of, but we, we most times we export it in the raw form and not mm. tap into the value. So government should do all they can, mm. push in for processing. We, have, we typically don't have enough processing plants across the country. Tell it, yeah. just before we round up, we have a minute to go uh, to round up the segment, but what do you also expect from agricultural cooperative societies? Because this is most definitely the traditional means that we know farmers organize themselves to access finance. So what sort of structure do you think they should have to move forward and then be able to have the funds they're looking for? I would say farmers, it's important for farmers and imperative for farmers to operate in cooperatives. It is, uh, we need to be able to put, and what you find now is that processors are putting farmers in some kind of cooperative as an algora system or an algora scheme and you realize that it's easier to get funding or some sort of uh, uh, should i say incentive by being together as a commodity meaning as an aggregate i can buy from the whole cooperative so i would say that if farmers can come together and put themselves in cooperatives have leadership around their crops um, it, would, it would be easier. I'm talking about structure now because there's a difference between having an assembly and having a proper structure that drives that assembly. Right, so are you saying that... Uh, what sort of structures, plans of actions, vision do you think the cooperative society should be looking into to look more attractive to anybody that is ready to invest? But then it becomes who, who is managing those cooperatives? The incentive is only driven by who manages it, which is why I would rather go with, with uh, an Algora scheme or an Algora uh, setup, mm. because then there is someone that is ready to take from me. But if as I am putting myself in a cooperative and I'm going to look for an aggregator that will buy from my cooperative, mm. then I'm not putting my uh, farmers at, at a position of uh, advantage, because then if my aggregator fails me, then the whole cooperative is let down. Mm. So it's good if... As a cooperative, you have an off-taker. Mm. Whatever value chain you're working in, there has to be someone that is willing to buy it and buy it at such a point that it's negotiable with market price. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Taylor La Cola Edun, Program Coordinator, Context Global Development, Thank for your you. thoughts. And David Appenda, Agri Finance Department <laughs> at Sterling Bank PLC. Thank you so much as Thank well you. for joining us. Definitely the conversation on agriculture continues shortly. Stay with us. And remember to follow us on all our social media platforms. That's at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And you can also watch us live and comment as well on YouTube at Plus TV Africa. Don't go anywhere.